till I get up. Time is barely on our side. I don't want to waste what's left. It's Wednesday, December 29th. I'm here at the West End Gun Club at the Rimfire Range. Finally got to come out to the range during my uh, winter break because, you know, I work for a university. So we have a we actually have a holiday break. So campus is closed for uh, that time between Christmas and New Year's. So usually at this time I would be out the range more often, but uh, we actually had some significant rain here in this area where my range facility is at and it flooded the creek. I posted a, a little video on Instagram. Uh, it was uh, I think Christmas, I came out Christmas Eve and it was really bad. And so uh, I waited a little bit and uh, I didn't come out on Christmas day to see what the condition of the range was, but I was paying attention to the USGS Creek flow because they, they have the they have measurements on how fast the creek is moving. And I think one of the range officers also came out on Christmas day evening to check it out. And he said it was pretty bad still. So. I ended up canceling our NRL 22 match, which was supposed to be last Sunday, December 26th. So unfortunately we didn't have the match. Uh, it is what it is. I canceled because I didn't feel it was gonna be safe for people to try to cross. And even if they, I didn't want them to waste their time driving out, seeing the creek and then turning around or driving, you know, coming out, seeing the creek and thinking, yeah, I can probably make it and I'm getting stuck. So I'd said, you know what, let's just go ahead and um, err on the side of safety. And I canceled the match. Um, so yeah. Um, I decided to come out today because I was looking at the creek flow and it said it was kind of stabilized. But when I, I thought it was going to be higher when I came in, but when you, if you saw in the, in the beginning of this intro, the, there was hardly any water in there and it was just a bunch of rocks because that's what happens when that creek floods. If there's a lot of water, it washes down all the boulders and rocks and it just flows it straight through. And that's what makes it very difficult, especially if it's like two feet of water and you can't see where those rocks are. That's when you get stuck. Um, or you can damage some of your drive line or whatever. And that's what I didn't want to risk from personally. But if it's clear water and I can see where things are at, I'm fine. But like Christmas Eve, it was very murky and muddy because of all the sand and silt that was washed in. And you could not see any, you know, you can't tell your line. So that's why you don't want to risk it in those situations. Anyway, I'm out here. I'm going to run through the January NRL 22 course of fire. I'm not going to spend much time setting up stuff though, because... We're supposed to have the, the match up on the upper range, which I need to get up there and actually start doing a survey because I just haven't had time to do any sort of survey of the top side to see where I'm going to lay out targets. So hopefully I can do that after this. I'll just go ahead and you know run through the course of fire and then drive up there and take a look at the range, do a survey. Um, I already have the course of fire for January set up because it's the, you know, the five standard NRL 22 stages plus five additional stages that I made up for an extended match. So it'll be an all day match between 50, well, a little bit more than 50 and then 300 yards. So between 50 and 300 yards, that's the distances we'll be shooting at. Anyway, let me go ahead and get uh, unpacked and set up because it is supposed to rain uh, this afternoon and you know, this could flash flood. So I'd like to get done and out of here before that happens. Through the wastelands, through the highways, and First stage we're going to run through is called Rock on the Roof, 122nd part time, 10 rounds. We have a single target 
Option one is a two inch at 57 yards. You're gonna start uh, in position on the rooftop. So you're gonna start on the rooftop, mag in action open. On the start signal, the shooter will engage the target with two shots in the following positions. Uh, top of rooftop, top of 55 gallon barrel, the tire, the five gallon bucket, then back to the top of the rooftop. And in the diagram, they have it laid out facing down range, rooftop, barrel, tire, and bucket left to right. No part of the shooter or gear slash the rifle may touch the ground when on the rooftop. The props must primarily support the rifle. Um, I'm assuming that you can still have your bag on the ground for those two stages, for th these other things, uh, such as the tire and the bucket. Um, it just says no part of the shooter or gear slash rifle may touch the ground when on the rooftop. Uh, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. You're just hitting uh, four, four different barricades or props and then uh, the rooftop twice. Two shots each. All right, let's go ahead and run through it. I finished with plenty of time on the left on the clock. I moved my bipod to so I can use it on the barrel. For me, I think it was a wise choice. I mean, you can probably just figure out how to just rest your rifle forend or the the forend of the rifle here and brace it like that. I felt like the bipod just gave me more stability and arc rail. You can move back and forth. Um, although I should have took the time to move it back to position when I got back to the rooftop because it was kind of in the way. But other than that, I have plenty of time. So 40 seconds left and I could go a little slower. It's a pretty straightforward stage. There's not really much to it. Uh, we are shooting an up angle. So on the bucket, I was able to just shoot like a, a prone position. Um, I think most people in, in a flat range, you'll, you'll be shooting kind of on a sitting position probably. Maybe even use your bipod. I don't know. Uh, or just a quasi like kneeling hunched over position on a flat range. But since we're shooting at a, about a 10 degree, 15 degree angle, um, I can shoot up, I can shoot prone from the bucket and it's really easy here. Um, not really much else to say there. It's pretty, pretty easy stage. Uh, I don't think anyone will have much difficulty with this. Um, please note that for anyone, assuming we hold the rent, you know, it's, there's still a lot of planning going on here, but assuming we hold the next month's match up on the upper range, we will be using option two. So option one I tested today was 57 yards. Option two will be 114 yards uh, with a four inch. So instead of 57, two inch, this is gonna be a 114, four inch. Let's move on to the next stage. Sun keeps dipping out of the clouds as they're passing by. It's getting a little windier, breezier, cause it's supposed to blow in some rain. I think it's supposed to rain around noon, or little afternoon. Anyway, uh, next stage of fire we're gonna run through is called in and out New Year's style. 120 second part-time, 12 rounds. So you're gonna do a mag change if you're a 10 rounder like these us Cali folks, you need a mag change. Uh, we have two targets, a one inch at 50 yards and a three inch at 100 yards. 10 points per impact, 120, 120 points possible. We're gonna start standing, rifle and all gear in hand, mag in, action open. On a start signal, the shooter will engage the near target with one shot, then the far, shot, far target with two shots from the following positions. Each tank trap tip in the center of the trap. Um, hey, this car. 
Somebody actually showed up. It's pretty dead out here. Um, shooter can shoot from each position in any order of their choosing. Each position must be used and cannot be repeated. Pretty straightforward. All three tips plus center. So you're going to go near far twice, although near once, far twice, near far, near once, far twice, near once, far twice, near once, far twice. It's 12 rounds total. Three, three shots from each of the four positions. Let's go ahead and run through it. This is a pretty straightforward stage, but I just was not comfortable at all. I'm not sure why I didn't. I was dropping a bunch of rounds. I did run it twice. I think I dropped four rounds on the first run through. I might have dropped three on the second run through. I have to look at the video. Um, one inch target 50 with the tank trap, you know, some people like myself, it's not easy. Um, so just getting stability there. And this is kind of a, a weird tank trap because it's kind of small, but not small. <laughs> uh, so depending on your body type, you might be kind of kneeling, adjusting. Um, plus we're shooting at two levels here, ground and up incline, ground for the 50 yard and incline at the 100 yard. So it's a little bit of variation here. I did use the mega bag. I always get this, I ask this get asked this question often, you know, this big bag uh, for the umpteenth time. This is the Coltac mega bag made by Coltac. Go ahead and check it out if you're interested in one. Um, but I ran that just because it just helps me 
feel a little more stable, uh, especially that one inch. Um, plus, on this range, like the way, you're, way you have to kind of sort of balance out here, the way your, your body is, um, maybe I should use two knees, I don't know. Probably be better if I went shot two knees instead of one and just uh, without the bag. I don't know. I just need to practice more. I mean, what the practice I do is just doing these run throughs, right? I don't really practice on a tank drive at home. I should drive far more. I just don't drive far. Anyway, that's how this stage goes. Um, pretty straightforward, standard tank trap stage, with two targets. Anyway, let's go ahead and um, move on. I need to pull those targets in and set up the next targets for the next stages we're going to run through. Uh, before I forget, uh, in the last stage of fire we ran through, uh, in and out New Year style, uh, it's option one is 50 with a one inch and 100 yards with the three inch. When we, if if everything goes to plan, we shoot up in the upper range uh, next month, we'll be using option two for the stage. So in and out New Year style, we'll be using option two, a two inch at 100 and a six inch at 200. Uh, the third stage we're running through is called after party mess, 120 second part time, 10 rounds. We have a single, sorry, two, two targets at a single distance. We have a one and a half inch and a four inch at 88 yards on a double hanger. 10 points, 100 points possible, 10 points per impact, 100 points possible. You're going to start standing, rifle and all gear in hand, mag in action open. On the start signal, the shooter will engage the targets from large to small with one shot each from the following positions. Three different side rungs of the ladder, the top of the sawhorse and the side of the chair. Note, the ladder will be open, laying flat on its side. The sawhorse will be turned long ways perpendicular to the firing line, and the chair will be open and laying on its side like the ladder. And I don't know, I think actually this is incorrect. It should be like this. I think that's how it's, yeah. Okay. Based on the pictures of the diagram. So basically, three positions on the ladder. Top sawhorse, side of chair. And the rungs, I guess you're just gonna place it on above each point. That's basically the goal here. Um, so just any of three of the rungs, and then top sawhorse, chair. It's just two shots. One on the four inch, one on the one and a half inch from each position. Pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and run through it.
I personally found this stage a little bit difficult. The ladder is not very stable. And you've got, it's some polymer and aluminum. So this thing, this wobbles a lot. Uh, the sawhorse, my bipod was in the way. Um, I should take it off. A lot of people say, why do you have your bipod on uh, when you're shooting? Because it gets in the way, you don't use, you're not using it. Well, the reason why is because I need a kickstand, right? Uh, I just like to have a kickstand because I'm doing all these things, setting up stuff, moving stuff around. And I just like to be able to set my rifle down. Uh, just set it as a kickstand. So ideally take your bipod off. It'll make things easier, uh, especially on the sawhorse stage because it's just going to get in the way if you have a flat bag. So if you have a big bag that you're going to rest on, sawhorse should be fine. And the bipod like hung up on this deal, on the hinge of the ladder. So just take your bipod off if you can. And this, this chair wasn't all that stable either, but the ladder, very difficult. So having a bag, like a pump pillow, or if you, the mega bag, I have a pump pillow, but I just like to carry the mega bag around. It's just easier to carry just that one bag. That, that's a lifesaver here. So if you have a pump pillow or something, you're gonna need something to, uh, to brace yourself, uh, brace your rifle while you're shooting off this ladder. It's gonna be very helpful. Anyway, that's it for this. Um, it's just mainly how to deal with this instability here. And I got a lot of pulse bounce when I, when I missed a couple rounds. Um, and the wind doesn't help me. Um, right now it's pushing left to right, that one and a half inch target, especially when it's swinging after you hit the four inch. I think I did finish with like 30 or 40 seconds on the clock, so I could slow it down a little bit and wait for the targets to be a little bit better. So that's another thing is time. Um, uh, just one thing here, you notice like the first run around, I shot from the, the taller end and I would do that, but there's poles in the way. They have these poles here that they use in the fire range because they set little tables here for their silhouette shooters. Um, so I had to come over the top and that's why I started, the second run I started here is just so I can slide the rifle over to each rung as opposed to lifting it up. Just uh, another uh, wasted motion on that part. But most ranges won't have to deal with this crap that we have here because we have these nuances or these little details that are unique to this range. Um, but just slide your rifle across. So it'll, you know, don't, you don't have to pick up your rifle because you're just wasting motion there. Anyway, that's it for this stage. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Keep forgetting to mention um, the last stage we ran through after party mess. Option one, 88 yards. Uh, if we do, if and when we do hold the match up on the top line, we'll be using option two, which is 176 yards with a three inch and an eight inch target. Uh, the fourth stage of our running through is called Times Square Ball Drop. 120 second part time, 10 rounds. This is the bonus stage, so if you finish with extra time on the clock, you get bonus points. Option one we'll be shooting today is uh, 62 yards with a KYL rack with a half inch, three quarter inch, and a one inch. That's three targets on the KYL rack. Then a one and a half inch and a two inch on a double hanger. So we have five targets total at 62 yards. Uh, I'll mention it now. Uh, if things go according to the plan, we hold the match on the, on the uh, upper range next month, we'll be using option two, the 124 yard distance with a one inch, one and a half inch, two inch, three inch, and a four inch target. Uh, anyway, so let's, uh, you're gonna start standing, rifle and all gear in hand, mag in action open. On the start signal, the shooter will engage each target with one shot from the large to small from a prone supported position. Once the small target has been impacted, the shooter will engage the target from small to large. All shots are hit to move on. So you're gonna go, large to small, then back up to, then you'll go small to large. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Basically one shot each, hit to move on. Uh, it could be pretty difficult. Half inch target at 62 yards is not an easy thing, especially in this wind that we're getting today, but we'll make it work. Um, I think I'm holding left. I think I'm holding left. Okay. All right, let's go and run through it.
That went very well, 10 for 10. Uh, I, fin I finished with 50.35 elapsed, and it registered all 10 rounds. So I finished with, uh, if you round down, uh, 79 seconds, or not even, no, 69 seconds, uh, which is pretty good. Um, it's a lot of bonus time. Uh, it's a little windy. I did hold the little left just barely, but my gun is shooting very accurately today. Um, if I'm missing, it's because of it's either me or the wind, but this Voodoo is shooting pretty accurate right now with that ammo I'm shooting. Anyway, pretty straightforward stage, just dropping the prone, make your hits. Uh, and I even had to wait for the small, spin, uh, small KYL to stop spinning. Uh, if it wasn't moving so much, I would have finished faster, but uh, plenty of time. Again, it's not about finishing with extra time. Uh, obviously, you don't want to time out, but you don't you're not here for bonus points. You want to just make your hits. So make sure you get all 10 hits. Uh, you should have plenty of time to shoot the stage and even wait for the KYL to settle and wait for the wind and wait for your body to settle to make that half inch hit at 60 DRs just in case uh, you just want to make sure that you're, you're making that shot on a small target. Anyway, pretty straightforward stage. Let's move on to the fifth and final stage. The sun is no longer out. The clouds have finally filled in. It should start raining pretty soon, actually. So probably should get finished up here. The last stage we're going to run through is called Lost at the Party. 120 second part time, 10 rounds. We have five targets. One inch at 35 yards, one and a half inch at 55 yards, two inch at 65, two and a half inch at 75, and a three inch at 100. Uh, option two, if we do decide to have the uh, match up there, or we we have decided, but in the event that we actually do have the matchup on the upper range next month, we will have five targets, but those will be option two, two inch at 70, three inch at 110, four inch at 130, five inch at 150, six inch at 200. But for today, I'll be using shooting option one. Uh, start, you're gonna start standing, rifle and all gear in hand, mag in action open. On the start signal, the shooter will take a supported prone position and engage the targets in the following manner with one shot each. 35, 100, 55, 75, 65. 65, 75, 55, 100, 35. So for what I can understand, you're going near, nearest, farthest, next nearest, next farthest, then middle. Then you're gonna start middle, second farthest, second nearest, farthest, and nearest. So you're kind of working your way near far until you get to the middle and then working your way back out. So it should be pretty straightforward. Uh, just got to remember your ordering. So let's go ahead and shoot this stage and we'll be done with the run through. Uh, stage of fire was pretty straightforward. It's a prone stage, pretty easy. Uh, the only difficult aspect at this range facility is that you're changing levels again. The, 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 near, the two nearest targets are on the ground. The three uh, farthest targets are increasing in angle and in, in elevation. <clears throat> so you're constantly changing your rear bag. But I finished with 71.25 elapsed. It's a pretty straightforward stage, just as prone. Um, I didn't dial elevation, I just held over. Um, I did adjust my parallax a little bit. I actually shot parallax set at 50. I think I shot at, no, I set it at 100 and I shot, sorry. I shot the 35 set at 35 and I shot the 100 set to 100. 
then I came back down and I was able to shoot the 50 without touching parallax and I shot the other two without touching parallax and worked my way out. Uh, the 35, I should have adjusted back down because I was still at 100 yard parallax, but I shot the 35 up close. Um, you know, as long as you got good cheek weld and you're consistent, it shouldn't be too big, big of a deal shooting uh, the wrong parallax at that given distance. Anyway, that's it for this stage. Um, that's it for the run through. I'm going to go ahead and pull in targets. We'll start cleaning up. If it's not raining yet, I'm going to see if I can swing up to the top side and just take a quick survey of the upper range uh, and see the layout. And I have some marking flags. I may mark some spots up, up there because uh, I'm going to have to come back out here later on in the next several days to do some more planning. Anyway, let's go ahead and get cleaned up and load all the stuff in the Jeep in and see if we can head up there. It's starting to rain a little bit, so I'm going to skip going up to the top range to do my survey. I'll just survey it later, probably in the next several days. Probably come out in the afternoon when there's hardly anyone out there. Um, I just need to get an idea of the range layout, put flags where we're going to place targets, and then make sure it's all good to go from the various positions. And then I still need to get my truck out here anyway, and I need to move some of the props, like the rooftop, um, a lot of the targetry stuff. I need to truck it up there so i can't do it in my jeep because the rooftop is kind of big so uh when the creek is is if the creek remains like it is today i can make that i can get through the creek with my tacoma which is just a five lug it's not a very it's not like a it's just a standard cab tacoma it's not like a you know dual cab or whatever it doesn't have as much clearance it's kind of like the uh, base model tacoma so uh if the creek remains the way it is and I can make it out here with that truck and I can start moving stuff up to the, the upper range um, in the next several days. So we'll take care of that later. But let's go ahead and get out of here before a flash flood hits and I get stuck out here. Although there is an alternate route, although I'm not sure if the alternate route was also going to get bad when it rains. So uh, let's just get through the creek and not get stuck out here. Anyway, uh, that's it for today. Hopefully you got some good information out of this uh this January NRL 22, uh, J January 2022 uh, course of fire. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. The, the tank trap stage, I dropped a few rounds. That latter stage is going to be a little finicky for some people. Uh, but you got two prone stages that should be really straightforward and pretty, you should be able to clean those stages, to be honest. Uh, unless you got some serious wind, then those small targets might be a problem for you. But uh, I'm not sure I, if I, hopefully I can get out here. Hopefully it doesn't rain too much more and the creek remains very, fairly calm so I can come out here in the next several days during the rest of my break before I have to go back to work. Um, I'd like to range vlog a couple more times, at least one more before the end of the year. And then uh, come January, we got SHOT Show, which uh, with things going on, hopefully it doesn't get canceled. I'm not sure if they're gonna cancel this so, you know, this close to it, but you know, if, if Nevada decides to change things up because they feel things are getting worse, then you never know. They may cancel SHOT Show. Hopefully they won't. Um, hopefully people will get vaccinated, their third booster or whatever, and, you know, practice safe hygiene. I, you know, I get that people don't want to do certain things, but, man, there's ways not to get sick or infect other people, right? It's pretty easy to do that, you know. And that's the one thing I liked about I mean, there's a lot of bad things about what's been going on the past two years regarding quarantine or, or lockdown and all this, you know, all these different things. I've not gotten sick. I got sick once. Sorry, I did get food poisoning. I don't know what happened. I got food poisoning. Stomach flu got hit me for a day. But I haven't got any colds, flus, anything like that. Communicable, disease, communicable diseases or viruses. I've not gotten anything. You know, social distancing, all the, all those practices that we've been doing to not get sick with coronavirus. It helps you not get sick with other stuff too. So, anyway, that's my little spiel there. Um, not to be controversial, I know some people feel differently, but it is what it is. Um, but I don't want to digress. Anyway, that's it for today. Uh, Jan or just January, December 29th here at the West End Gun Club. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vlog.